this section of 321 between Hampton and Boone. It's a major, major highway. A lot of people use it to get from uh, Bristol, Elizabeth, and John City up to Boone Way or vice versa from Boone back, back that way. So from the time the flood happened, September 27th, 2,000 feet of road right in Elk Mills is, is the main reason you would have to go 45 minutes out of your way and come back to that other side of that washout. It impacted many locals, many older people who didn't have a way to get oxygen, uh, their, their mail-in mail -in medication, all kind of stuff like that, that that you don't normally think of. It made it really tough on a lot of good people. My name is Scotty Burke and I'm the field superintendent on the project here for Baker's Construction Services. We had to repair five different sites. The first one we called Site 1, where the water would come over and eat the site out of it. Probably one and a half lanes was still left. Site 2 was down to one lane, maybe less, a little less than one lane where the water had eat it away. Site 3 was a, uh, it's kind of more of a mudslide off of a embankment fell into the road we had to clean up. Site four, we had to uh, remove an existing culvert pipe and replace it with new, bigger concrete pipe, which entailed taking 57 to 60 foot out and bringing it back up, all back up with the uh, graded solid rock as well. Site five is just a, a small mudslide. We had to stabilize the bank with it. So we decided to start with site two uh, so we could get a, a way in and out for our equipment and uh, dump trucks. It was the only, only one that impeded us from getting plumbed through the job site. So we started there. First, we had to remove what was left of the road, take it all down to bedrock and bring it back up with a, a select backfill and the retaining wall. The site two was the main, our main way in and out. If, if we didn't fix that one first, we had to do a 45 minute run around to get here. The, the river was running right beside of it, so we had to re reroute the river and move it over off of us so we could dig and not be in the water. We tried to uh, get site two in for the local people, EMS, fire, police. If, if something was to happen, they needed to weigh in and out just as bad or, or worse than we did. So it was critical to get site two drivable safely for emergencies. There was actually a couple times when we had to uh, scratch out a little road to allow an ambulance or police personnel to get through. We actually saved one life, I think, is what they told us uh, by letting, letting them through one day. We dug all of the existing road out. Then come the wall guys, so we had to start a foundation for them. We had to put a, uh, a layer of stone down for them to start their wall on. As they come up, we, we backfilled for them, so we had to bring in a select backfill rock to tie in their wall with their grid. So as they're bringing the wall up, we're doing the, the backfill behind it, tying the grid and all that together. They'll do an area of the wall. We'll come in and backfill that area while they're building another section of the wall. And we just kind of flip flop back and forth until we get all the way up. Once the wall's complete, then you move along to site 2B uh, is the one we moved to next. And it was a lot like site 2, uh, just not as significant take out half half of the road, one lane, bring it all back up with GSRT, get to the top, put base stone. Then you move along to paving, striping, guardrail. And and then you're done and out of there and you have a safe way for the local people to get in and out. We can get all of our supplies and stuff in in a timely manner. And uh, everybody's happy. To uh, continue the ease of getting equipment and supplies in. 
we backed up and got site one the edge of the road had started breaking off and falling down so we dug one lane out six or seven feet deep and then we had to put a grid and surge size rock layer in to get five or six layers of that one foot deep and then we built a uh, concrete retaining wall on it then you have to uh, backfill it to uh, within a foot and we put road base down then you get to pave stripe it and you're golden there so the next big traffic problem we faced was site four. We had to uh, remove an existing culvert that ran under the road 60 foot deep. So I had to do a uh, detour route around it. It's only like an eight, 10 minute side road to get right to the end of the site, end of the site four. Still an inconvenience, but not as great. We had to remove all the dirt off the top of it so that we could get to it, remove it, and then bring the uh, better material which was graded solid rock in so once we removed the old pipes we had to uh, create a new footing and foundation for the new concrete pipe which was substantially bigger Putting in this 120 inch pipe, we had, we had obviously never put a pipe in that big. We were trying to figure out how we were going to do it and uh, the, the name that kept popping up was Jesse, Jesse Buchanan. He's our one of our best pipe layers we have by far. He and Dustin Hughes and Tim Eads all three came up with a decent plan, idea, whatever you want to call it. So we had to use one of our one of our bigger uh, excavators, a 374 Caterpillar, to uh, install the pipe. It did it with no no problem at all. Each joint weighed close to 26,000 pounds a piece. We had to walk them down a two and a half to one slope, roughly. So getting them down there was kind of a challenge. We used this big pipe hook that goes into the top and allows you to set it a whole lot easier than uh, a chain or anything else. It was 68 joints of pipe, two runs running side by side, double barrel. So with a 120 inch pipe inside diameter, the accuracy is pretty important on getting from one end to the other and ending up where you want it to be. So we had to use uh, a couple different ways with our pipe laser. We started out with it, of course, in front of the pipe, shooting to the end we were going to. But once you got so far, we had to backfill the inside of this pipe with two foot of riprap so that would block your laser unless you raised it up so at that point we just moved it to the other end and Jesse and Kirby come up with a, a little jig to set the laser in and put the legs down in it so it couldn't move it would be stationary at that point on the other end so we'd never block it never be in the way that's how we got to the end of it once we got the new pipe in you start the backfilling process. So site four is roughly 400, 450 feet long, probably 60, 70 foot wide at the top and 67 feet to the bottom of that pipe. So you can imagine the amount of dirt that came out and then the amount of rock that had to go back in truckload by truckload. It seemed like forever one truckload was a, a small drop in the bucket. Going into site four, we all thought that uh, laying the concrete pipe was going to be the, the biggest challenge of all five, six sites we have here. After a little bit of talking and calculating through how we were going to do it, it actually went faster than any, any other phase of the job. You can credit that to the, the people who did it. Then we moved on to site five and three. Site five was pretty quick work. It was no more than 15 or 20 loads of dirt we had to haul out. It, it had just slid down into the into the ditch and they just wanted it removed. But uh, site three was a little more of a, a task. Site three, the whole bank had, had slid. We had to dig out all of the slid material, remove it, haul it to our way site, then bring it all back with uh, bring it all back up to grade with GSR graded solid rock. So we couldn't go from the top. There's a couple reasons really. There's some power lines. The driveway of the people's property that lives there is too steep to get a dump truck into. There was 18 trucks at the most, I think. So we had to build a ramp at the bottom, ramp it in there as far as we could until you had to until you ran out of room 
and you had to take two or three different hose. We used a, uh, we used a 323, a 340, and a 336. Set them in there in stages, flinging it to each other, flinging it to each other, so on and so forth, till you got to the top, and then you worked your way down on a, on a ramp all the way out to the end. And then we had to put a guardrail at the bottom of it to keep people from running into the, into the rock, but we'll get there. We worked through many different types of weather here. We, we started, we worked through one winter, made it into summer, back into winter again. It's been cold. There was days we were working in the snow just to try to get Site 2 done. Uh, pumping water in freezing con conditions, that's not ideal. Nobody liked it, but most of our guys didn't, didn't fuss or complain too much. Definitely frigid temperatures here sometimes. Probably one of the coldest places in our state. So we had a really first class group of people on this project here. Most of the time it was a core of five or six people, but at times up to 10, 15. Everybody worked extremely hard, did everything they were asked, tried to do it in a timely fashion. So we had the concrete crews, we had pipe crews, grading crews, uh, we had to sub out the asphalt, we had hydro seating, uh, silt fence, guardrail, traffic control, a uh, good sign crew come back and put up all the signs. We had uh, striping crews, and you also had to, to be involved with the public some, so we tried to uh, accommodate them as, as often as we could, and uh, a bunch of them accommodated us as well. They, everybody here has been friendly from the fire chief, Mr. Walsh. He's, he's been a great asset to have on this project. The Campbells, they're all great people. We've become friends uh, more than just acquaintances. The ladies up here at the store, the Sugar Hollow store, they're, they're uh, first name basis now with most of the guys. It's a decent place to eat or try it out. Uh, and then you got Bob's Grill up here. They got a, a bunch of nice people that work there as well. They've all been more than helpful. This section of 321 between Hampton and Boone, it's a major, major highway. A lot of people use it to get from uh, Bristol, Elizabeth, and John City up to Boone Way or vice versa from Boone back, back that way. It impacted many locals, many older people who didn't have a way to get oxygen, uh, their, their mail in mail-in medication, all kind of stuff like that that you don't normally think of. It made it really tough on a lot of good people.